welcome back. Today is Wednesday, and as you know, our last set of devotionals is done. So now we have to start something new. So we are going to look into the study, Women God Used to Pave the Way for Jesus. And it is a Bible study that was created by the girls on the YouTube channel Coffee and Bible Time. So the girls who created this are also YouTubers and sisters, and like us, they post a lot of faith-based content. So that drew us to their channel. They put together this Bible study and they made it free for everyone. So we will leave the link to that in the description if you guys wanna go check it out on your own. I think each day of the devotional, it focuses on one of the women, which are the women who they're talking about in the title where it says, Women God Used to Pave the Way. And so the women that are mentioned in this are Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and the wife of Uriah, and Mary. The first one I don't think is about one of the specific people. I think it's kind of an intro, but that's what we're going to do today. So the way they have this set up is they have like day one, the title, and then they have the scripture that you can read that goes along with it, which is Matthew 1, 1 through 17, which is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. So it's just a bunch of names. We're not going to read that one today. We don't want to embarrass ourselves trying to pronounce them. <laughs> I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or not, but like, see, it's got your scripture, then your devotional, and then it's got some like reflection questions and stuff. Now we're going to jump into reading the devotional. Stick with us because this is a long one. <laughs> it says, in the first chapter of Matthew, we read about the genealogy of Jesus. Genealogy is a fancy term for a family tree. These are Jesus' relatives all the way back to Abraham. So what is the point of Matthew starting the beginning of this letter with a genealogy? His point is big and important. We should not miss it. First, he wanted to prove that Jesus is the promised descendant of Abraham. Abraham, all the way back from Genesis, is the first person that God called to be the father of God's chosen people, the Israelites. And he was also promised to one day be the father of many nations. The reference for that one is Genesis 17:5. The Messiah would come through Abraham. Second, this genealogy shows that Jesus is a son of David. This is important because God promised that through David would come the promised Messiah. And the references for that promise are 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 16, Isaiah 11, 1, and Jeremiah 23, 5 through 6. In this genealogy, Matthew mentions five different women. This is notable because it is unusual for women to be in Hebrew genealogies. The five different women are Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba, and Mary. These women, their stories, and the backgrounds they came from are unconventional. Tamar deceitfully played the role of a prostitute to become pregnant through her father-in-law. Rahab was a Canaanite prostitute. Ruth was a Moabite woman who the Israelites despised. Bathsheba was involved in a scandal with the king. And Mary was a young woman who became pregnant out of wedlock which the whole community saw as a scandal. These are all real stories and real women who are in the line of Jesus. Although these stories are dysfunctional and by far from perfect, Jesus still chose to be born through this bloodline. All these women knew what it was like to be an outcast, to be different and judged by those around them. These women walked through hardship and tragedy, yet God sovereignly used their lives for good by including them into the bloodline of Jesus. In Matthew, highlighting these specific five women, we see that God can use the lives of broken people for his glory. He can use painful situations and hardships for good. We learn that Jesus, the Son of God, was willing to be related to prostitutes, Gentiles, and women who walked through scandal. He was willing to associate with the lowly and those society looked down upon. Jesus did not come as a mighty king in the world's eyes. He did not come from a perfect bloodline, nor did he have a perfect family tree. Instead, he became a human and took on human flesh. He set aside his majesty in heaven and came for you and for me. This is what Christmas is about. Romans 8.3 says, The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Jesus was not shy when he came for sinners and to take on sin, so that we would not have to be under sin anymore. This is the beautiful Savior we serve, a Savior that was willing to relate to us and our humanity and take on a broken and sinful family tree. That's deep. So then it has thoughts slash reflection. It says, journal and pray your thoughts about today's reading and devotional. What stood out to you and what did you learn? 
Meditate on Romans 8, 3, which says, For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So just take time to focus on what Jesus did for us. It says, knowing that Jesus took on human flesh for us is astonishing and life-changing. How do you want this to change your life today? How will you let this take you deeper with Christ? And then it says, reflect on your story. What hardships have you been through that God has used for good in the past? What hardships are you going through now that you need to give over to God to trust that he is sovereign over that? That's the end of the first day. I feel like it was a pretty good opening. It kind of brings to our minds that God can use anyone and he is willing to use anyone so much so that he had people that society would look down upon in the genealogy of Jesus. So you're never too far gone or too stinky for God. We hope you guys will come back and join us for the rest of these studies. There's seven of them in total, so we'll do one every week for the next seven weeks. I think the next few, we're gonna be taking a deeper look at each of the lives of these women who, who people thought were too stinky, but God did not. If you guys enjoy Bible study with us, we post Bible studies every Monday. Then we do other faith-based content on Wednesdays like today, some type of devotional or something. And then we also post fun videos on Fridays. Could be food, fashion, makeup, DIYs, shopping, anything like that that we just enjoy doing. So we hope you guys will check those out too. If you guys do enjoy our videos, you can like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to be notified when we upload, hit the little bell after you subscribe. Other than that, we hope you have a good day, have a good week, and we will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.